guess what that is? That there, they are the women who will, can thank you, that will thank you, will be that grateful that they would give you a standing ovation if they met you and you had only worked with them online because you've changed their life so much. Everything on the inside of their body as feelings, as thoughts, as beliefs, as as what was true before that where they, when they were internally suffering and what is true now when they're not. The women who have ha had a lot of suffering emotionally on the inside, they will forever be grateful because you were the last person they needed to see about that. And uh, so these here are women who get this kind of appreciation and thanks from the women they facilitate this amazing uh this amazing new process new way if you will new psychology for women so every time they think of you it'll be because you've impacted their life but what a lot of people don't understand is when you impact a woman's life a ripple effect occurs right out to up to 8,000 people will be directly influenced by her so if you change how she's interacting if you change how she's being her if you change bring her to who she was meant to be more than who she's been then she still was going to interact with those 8,000 people but the benefits of that like the transference and the power that and what you know by her being free uh, on the inside the ripple effect is really different and that's what we get to see so just showing you that this can be you and that was my last live event that I showed up to and they are transformologists so they really do appreciate having such a tool because they themselves are clients too they themselves have had their own breakthrough and they are the evidence of it and they role model that so hmm. so imagine right a global movement of everyday women able to reduce suffering for women uh, they ready women not just every, every woman it has to be ready women because it changes them you can't you know still have one foot in the door no I want to suffer it gives me attention but they want to not <laughs> so for those ready women who've had past life events that are painful or just been given hand-me-down belief systems we are going, which is what we're going to talk about tonight who would who would wonder what I mean by that what could be a hand-me-down belief meaning you didn't come up with it what could that be? I'll find my little comments here. What could be? Hi, Carla. So, what could be a hand me down belief? Have you ever seen them where you, you can't quite explain it? So, it might be you might have been raised with better the devil you know than the one you don't. Things like that. So, how nice would it be? to know uh, our great great grandchildren and I have a great grandchild and I can tell you what it does to you when you become a grandmother let alone a great grandmother you you understand you have a ripple and it's already in place it's already going it's already passed down part of it anyway and to get to have access to internal harmony on tap that's the dream here that's everything we're doing is to get this to be known so it is important work everyday women that just are already got what it takes which is just a, a really big caring heart a real good moral compass and and wants to make a significant difference not just sell stuff not just not just do things that don't really stick and last like they've got that they've got that level of understanding if I'm going to facilitate it 
I want to make sure it's win, 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 win. Up the line, down the line, and where can I most be utilised to do that? So they are the women I'm looking for. My, you know, believe it or not, sometimes just you know an empty nest are looking for something, and then suddenly she comes across this and she goes, "Holy dooly, this is like the purpose that I could really uh, wear and embody because I truly do care about women." And I want to set them free. And by the way, I happen to need a bit of free setting myself. <laughs> um, it is important work because really, ultimately, life's just too short. We're me not meant to suffer like we do, like we think. It's even noble around this world in some, you know, society because everybody's meant to hate people that have money, for example, yet everybody complains they're broke. But you hate the people who have the money so on. So why would you be given it? What could you be making happen as well? Because we want to look at your influence, your power, because if you're, the sad thing is most people don't use their power, and I don't mean masculine power. I don't mean ruling over people. I'm talking about a power that is in every person as a potential. It's a power where... You lead yourself, you're a good human, you want to not cause damage and you just want to make the world a better place. Dream and see, you know, potential. So, yeah, tormenting our own minds like we do, it's normal. You are not unusual. When you beat yourself up, it's just that what you perceive others see of you and think of you is what you then see of yourself and then you do the same thing they're doing to you but you do it to yourself, right? That's what we want to stop uh, because it's not, it's become the norm, but it's not normal because you don't have to. You can just know thyself and know, know you're a good person, all of that. What if we break the cycle for us as the facilitation people rolling it out? And what if we broke you through and then what if that's what you do for others? Imagine the ripple effect of women healed and transformed and even girls maybe when they turn 18 they just they don't need psychology they don't need to get that bad they they simply it doesn't even matter whatever's happened as horrible as has happened whatever it is that there's a way made for her brain and how she works that she just goes she just gets healed and empowered and it doesn't change the people outside of her but it puts her in a very very powerful position of seeing reality can't manipulate it then the only thing you know we're all hypnotized to what we think is reality so moving right along let me have a quick check-in see what we're going yeah meaning and rewarding absolutely you know that's why we don't fit the masculine models we're running with business you know this this is a simple way of doing it when you go just with your grain then it's not hard. It's almost like you don't have to, almost don't have to learn new stuff. It's that easy. You have to get back to all that you are in your actual design, though, which we've been absolutely fooled about and, and don't know what it is. And that's what we're here to educate. And that's why I'm looking for women to help me educate others on this. I'll teach you, you teach others. So meaning, meaningful, rewarding, absolutely. Consciousness, absolutely. So consciousness also in uh, accountability and responsibility, not just be conscious of only what we want to be conscious of, but actually be truly conscious. Yeah. All righty. I will just quickly say I'm an excited person. Is this MLM? I want to clear that up right now. No, it's not. If you're going to think, oh, this is some sort of MLM because she's too happy or she's too excited, it's not normal. We're all meant to be miserable and or serious this is serious work we do here um, but seriousness is part of what we actually need to learn is to lighten up you get one life so you will if you see me passionate just it's just who I am okay um, so yeah all right what I do know is lasting transformation that's what I know inside out and the psychology of women. So just stay tuned for that. So if you have questions, wait, because I'll very likely cover it. And you know, I've been around 
for the, the entirety of, of the Institute of Women. I had my first breakthrough 11 years ago, almost, almost in a, in a month or two, it'll be 11 years since I first cleared the, the mess that had me bogged down. And from the day that I walked out of that pit, I have had absolute, absolute knowing that Creatrix was the real deal, the thing that, that changed me, that saved me, that healed me, that it works. I guess, I guess you know, I've, I've been around so long and I've had so um, much experience around Creatrix with Maz, with the Institute, um, helping women, talking to women, knowing all the women who come through here. And to think that I could have missed that, if I hadn't kept stepping up in my growth and excitement to, to be all that I can be and to trust that the process is it's only ever, ever going to um, do, do and be and help me in the way that's best for me. So with this being the, the, the year of the 10 year anniversary of thousands of women having this, if we all have that faith and that trust, the next 10 years are gonna be absolutely phenomenal. Like I, I can't even imagine it. I'm here because I feel like I'm, I'm just existing. I'm not, not actually participating in my life. I'm just going through the motions. <laughs> That's probably because I'm, I've been alone for so long. And the sadness and, and, and anger and and everything else just builds up and you just start pushing people away. It gets worse and worse and worse and then you just... It's just so sad. You just go into yourself and you just, I don't know, find this empty place and you just can't get out of it. I want a better life. I want to be happy. So Maria was childless not by choice, okay? And her heart was just broken, absolutely crushed. The grief was incredible. She became a recluse. She locked herself away in her house. All her friends were having babies and as much as she wanted to be invited to everything, but, you know, she didn't really fit in because everyone always talked about kids. Then when she was, she would just be so brokenhearted, so depressed. She would lock herself away again and it reminded her because when she was a little girl, all Maria wanted to be was a mum. We're women taking our own emotional well-being into our own hands and we're liberating ourselves. We're not waiting for a knight in shining armour who's going to arrive with some lab coat on or something like that at the doctor's office or, you know, as if that's going to happen. So I'll share with you what is happening and what's not happening. Uh, this is not discriminating any genders at all just so you know and when we talk about this we we will do a history run on what is just facts i will try and explain a few things but we are not man haters we've got sons grandsons we want basically hum harmony on this planet and we're not you know feminists as that word has been is tainted with we simply want to recalibrate women on the inside and the method is designed for the biological structure that people have not realized has been needed and is missing and nothing caters to it so that's all so it's not for any other reason right we just want to we heal way more relationship walk off into the sunset and that would only be because it really what do you know it really just was him and he wasn't going to step up but in most cases, we heal relationships. The coming together is more. The communication's better. Uh, the limbic system's working better. You know, they're able to release love more easily and not be in self-preservation mode so much and turning off their emotions and being so just disconnected. So, um, we. This is about bringing back the natural order of things by resetting women back to their natural innate design that is right there it's just a matter of unblocking it's not as if you need to go we, we're not forward pacing we don't go and make you you know come into awareness of certain things you will come into them yourself because of how this works because it's a self a self-resolving method and it works by just needing a facilitator to sit there and know how to guide women to that. That's why you don't need to know what you possibly are afraid that you need to know. You being the person who can take it forward, you, you need to be out of your way to do that. You need to be out of that way. 
but at the same time loving it, enjoying it, creating a legacy. But if the focus is about you, 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 ironically, this kind of work, legacy work, doesn't work. Legacy work gives you lifestyle by, as a consequence, as a blessing. You don't have to chase lifestyle. When you, when you, oops, when you create a legacy and that's your focus, your focus is on other people. And ironically, you get rewarded much more for that because guess what? Clients are other people. So we'll be sharing some female-specific and deep understandings uh, some in, in layman's terms as best I can as well. So lasting healing and empowerment, okay? That helps, benefits men, women, girls, boys, doesn't matter, everybody. So those of you who stay till the end, okay, we've got a couple of things we're going to do. We're going to give you... Uh, you can claim a $1,000 scholarship. So I've just put that into a slide to show how that can benefit you if you love and what we do and it's something you want to be part of and you obviously still have to fit within the criteria of the program. So we do screen. There's certain things. I'll share what that is too. You'll know everything by the end basically uh, that you need to know. You'll get all the problem program details, all the pricing, everything like that, all the expectations. But two lucky ladies um, are going to have the opportunity to have two thousand dollars, an extra thousand um, off. This is these are off the seminar pricing, so it's pretty good. Like the whole idea is to because you've bothered, you've already. It's kind of like a test, a task that if you sat through that. You, and, it, you know, you put yourself through enough not assuming you know everything already and you were open-minded enough to get through it, you are more likely to get to the end and be freaking wowed as well. Also, you get the chance to get um, to see not just me with Creatrix in a uh, uh Film Festival Award winning documentary called Impact. Uh, So you can get to view that uh, as well. So you can all get a ticket to that or get to be able to go and watch that. I'll give you uh, a link just for the people who are on here live. Now, just quickly, I want to try and get me out of the way, but just try to help you understand what how did this come about? Because it's part with it's it's within the solution. So if you don't understand, you may you get to the solution and go, yeah, but I don't get that. So I want to show you. So this is my family. I've been alive for these three photos. That's seven of my family. Seven generations. Okay, let me just see. I think I've got another slide that actually, yeah, that's me there. Look, black hair, white hair. Um, so. I've known my great-grandmother and I have a great-granddaughter. Now, that's rare on this planet, three five-generation photos with three different generations and women, which is very unusual to those. So my story is one of deep, deep, deep generational patterning that was very unconscious, right? So... (laughs) So deep, it did look like just being unlucky. And this is what we're going to talk about, epigenetics, family patterns, how, you know, no matter what you do, the more the more you push against it, the more you create it. Like that's what people do not know. Okay, so you can be determined to break the cycle, but why, how, just by deciding that? Is that enough? I was the one who was going to break the cycle. I can tell you now. I was absolutely going to be that person. And guess what? It happened to my children. So I will say to you that from my mess came my message, but it basically absolutely burnt into me as a purpose. And that obsessive compulsive determination is what has led to this being a new way because it's it was never going to come from somebody inside the system from a perspective of um, expertise in what I'm going to show you is questionable expertise 
in outcome transformation. Not, I'm not saying in, you know, being great stuff, but females just happen to suffer twice the pain physically and emotionally and you can just Google that. And I've got some Googling to do with you tonight on a few things as well. Uh, many people just don't know about family patterns at all. Because you know why? Because everybody talks about, well, you know, it can happen to anyone. Yes, and that is so true. And anything can happen to anyone, right, that hasn't been in a bloodline. But the likelihood of it happening that's already in the bloodline is well and truly over 99%. People don't know that. The police know that. Ask them. They know by your last name and your address whether what to expect. They told me that and I was blown away. I said, why is this? Why do you know this? Why don't you tell people this? So that they can see that. And he said, I don't, I don't know why they don't. But we just know this stuff. So patterns, that is something they just know what to expect. Um, why doesn't everyone know? And that's what I want to do. So this is me with my grandy babies. They're my grandchildren. Um, and there's another one on the way. <laughs> so that's why we do it. Because sometimes if you're young, you don't have children, but you wanted to have children, you might be an auntie. There's something about being a grandparent or shockingly, as I did, realising, oh, my God, I did not want to pass on the cycle. I stood every, I stood against it. I fought against all of that stuff. And yet on my watch it happened anyway. And then people will say, yeah, but all babies are born, you know, cleaned out, don't have it. No, they're actually born with the predisposition to experience a similar life. Now, that just sounds woo-woo. Bear with me, okay? So anyway, before I was 32 years old, so that between 31 and 32 is when I had an extreme life redirection. So it's not all doomy, gloomy stuff, but I want to tell you this. But where do you see this? Where's your version of this in your family or in people close to you or that you know of where there's a lot of suffering? emotionally, mentally. For me, it was just all I knew was being gaslit. All I knew was being oppressed. All I knew was being told. It's just what men do go and play. All I was told was, oh, look at your sister. She's beautiful. So it's not direct abuse. It's to cause you to be less than, to feel less than or not good enough and all that. And this is just commonplace. It's just don't want to make anyone feel horrible feels, but let's get real. Drive up your street. For every third to fifth house, it, ha it will happen in. And every one in three of those by more than one person. Now, why mention that as abuse? Well, because... So it causes something to occur, and that's what I want to talk about. And it's the thing, it, what it causes to occur ingrains it, if that makes sense. What my mum was told, and look, let, let me show you her. This is her as a little kid. Look at her, sweet little darling. So inside of every one of us, it's just a little girl, and we're doing the best we can. But what we don't realise is sometimes we're just being, we're saying what we were told. We're not questioning it and going, hang on a minute, that's not okay. We're just, that's just how it is. For example, you know, girls being told not to hate, why not? Why are boys allowed to hate? Why not? So we never stop and go, why is that okay? And do something to disrupt the beliefs, the, the package of belief system. Anyway, um, yes, of course it happened to my mum. What do you think she was told by my, her mum? And it, it absolutely definitely happened to her mum. So, yeah, just understanding that it's patterning. It's not people who don't experience this particular patterning might have other patterning like, you know, um, being bankrupt or poverty. It could be divorce. Single mumming, things like that, um, attracting certain kinds of people can be bullying, 
patterning is patterning is patterning basically all right so for me it was horrific some of the things I experienced I don't you can see it there um, but what do you think the chances are of four generations of women having guns at their head really come on so what is at play so because my patterning our patterning was so strong it gave me that drive to work it out whereas a lot of people don't notice this the depth of patterning the predisposition they rather see it as oh well it's just a trauma response inherited but it's actually life events that occur similarly to like it's it's not something that makes sense but it's it's a thing and it's I've got a lot of scientific evidence now as well there was no self-esteem you did not speak up you were you know had to be in the corner you did not ever speak up for that terror in your veins of condemnation and also not wanting to hurt anyone else just because you were hurt you know it doesn't matter what's done to us as women sometimes there's nothing we would we would never ever do the same or or hurt them just because they hurt us some of and you know sometimes we get so bitter and twisted we actually do want to I'm not even going to talk about this these are just some of my awards and you know just if you're wondering who the hell am I to say anything so I turned my life around went from extreme poverty all the time to being free to earn my own income from believing I was a chewing gum under mentors to actually you know being able to stand for up for women you know that's a long way and help startups I've helped startups you know turn over more than 35 million dollars and that was up until 10 years ago but well, that's not now if you added what's happened since I mean you know I just know that then so we do have trained women in 24 countries now with my solution but there's also things I teach like female business and things like that like really unpack female psychology as well as transformation here's somebody lighten the mood a little bit somebody that's actually come extremely through using creatrix from being you know similar to me in a way of emotional you know real emotional torment it's indescribable because it's life-changing it's absolutely and it's, and it's not just even me and it's your it's every generation from now on my children and my what <laughs> grinch I can be free of this shit and that's a gift you can't put a price on and that's what she's done she's given every woman a gift you cannot put a price on forever long past when Maz goes long past when all of us go her gift will just keep on giving and giving she's a beautiful woman okay so the whole idea is not to get caught up in the story with them because who would think that the real solution has no story in it okay so get ready I am going to explain how it is possible in a minute so what about you I want you to tell me have you noticed where your mess has become your mission what have what are you willing to share that you've been through you don't have to give any details but you know just call it something that makes you driven to ensure or to do your best so that other people don't suffer it it could be just people pleasing um which is all similar anyway in this big pool of stuff i'm going to share with you in a minute it really is still all the same so i was forged with mine when what happened to me happened to my kids like that's was on my watch and i was doing everything in my power it's like wow how did that even happen so with the right the thing is to ask the right questions without belief systems that are limiting and keeping say hang on a minute I had been around for so long and realized so much um, that I knew others didn't and and it was like when I bring people 
into awareness. They wouldn't even know it. They're like, oh, is that a thing? I'm like, oh, my gosh, it is all around you, all everywhere. Like, so I'm going to show you exactly how it leads to the cycle and the continuation and many, many problems associated that people don't realise are associated. And people have one vision of it of let's say DV, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it, they're over there. Because you aren't feeling it and maybe haven't been through it, the empathy's not there. These people, um, to break their cycle, the very first step is empathy. You know, the, in Japan, in schools, they teach very young children how to do empathy because it's some people have not had that because they didn't suffer it but they also didn't, you know, know even that feel as bad as it does to the people experiencing it. Yeah, the stage is alive, absolutely. Yep, that's right. Okay, so we've got, you know, there's women in here definitely that do have a purpose and from your mess can come a very strong message because what are experts anyway? Like what gives them the right? to just know how brains work and then make assumptions. So every one of us are different and pain is felt differently with a different people and a lack of emotions is either an entitlement -y thing, not having experience, not understanding or doing empathy uh, to try to understand it or it's the turning off of their own emotions for some reason, self-preservation, protection or whatever. The older you get and the more generations you get, huh, the more you actually just see it. It's like crystal clear, the patterning. This is me here holding my great-granddaughter on the right. That is me in the middle. So I was a barmaid, a waitress, and a checkout chick, right? Not to talk down to any of those, but that is what I call myself. And that on the left is the little girl that was treated so poorly and unloved and all of this stuff, you know, unwanted, um, who experienced a lot of things that she should not have had to. And then she grew up to go on then and experience adult abuses as well, doing the best she could, ending up a single mother of four children. You know, if you look in the mirror and the pupils, you're 100% she's still there. She didn't go on anywhere, you know. So she's right there, right? And you are the gatekeeper of if she gets to experience or feel love or not, believe it or not. Now, that's not what a lot of women want to hear. It's not my fault. We're going to go there too tonight because we really are going to go there. You know, I was kicked in the head steel cut boots and I can tell you now, once I understood family pattern, I realised he also was running his. Okay, so the understanding and then the responsibility that, all right, four things to change what must occur, and that's what is, was had to happen. Your little girl, you can adopt her, love her, right? Absolutely, especially if no one else has. Like, you can make it up to her. But it's not easy. It's all right to tell you that, isn't it? You're not, you're not lost. You didn't go anywhere. Be kind to yourself, okay? Something happened to me, and I want to share what happened to me that happens not just to me but to people who actually turn their life completely around, and that is there's a wake-up call moment. What is that thing? So that took me from breaking my entire generational cycle. What happened in a single moment? And wake-up call. You know, maybe comment if you know anyone that's had a wake-up call, whether you've had wake-up calls. We can have little ones along our life. I had such, I had one, but the timing of it is what was important because it's the timing of being ready and stepping up and saying, I'm done, I'm going to change this. So going off in business, right, blitzing it, all of the great stuff, right, business. Suddenly, I, I realised certain things happened, okay? I realised what didn't happen. Now, this is important. 
I didn't meditate. I didn't set goals. I didn't become just positive. I certainly didn't compartmentalize. My brain doesn't work that way. Um, I didn't have a plan either. It wasn't a course like full of knowledge or something like that that did it. It it was not help. <laughs> there was no help. It wasn't being shown how either. It wasn't therapy. It was not learning one thing from anyone outside of myself. Now, this is big. It's not to say we don't learn great stuff from people all the time. I'm talking to break a cycle within, okay? I also didn't have to become someone I wasn't. So that's important, right? I didn't use a modality like NLP, time on therapy, hypnosis, all of these things, you know, EFT and every other thing that ends in T. And um, I didn't do them. I didn't do anything like that. And this is the thing. <laughs> all right. This is the model we're taught, isn't it? To change your life, you get a life coach or you go and get therapy or you go to a positive psychology person and you're told to do, 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 do. You have to do this differently. You have to do that. You have to do, 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 right? And that's when you get to have love, success, whatever. And that's when you'll get to be, 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 be successful, be happy, be at peace, be valued, be respected and all of the stuff. What I realized was how hard it was for the thousands of women that I was training as well as thousands of leaders and on five continents I was traveling and training and teaching. So it's not this. This is the masculine universal taught system. I even wrote a book on it because I thought, but, you know, it's very hard to admit to yourself that you don't do what you teach because everyone's telling you, don't tell anyone that because you must be doing it wrong then because this is how it's done. It's never questioned. So every, every success book for, of all time, the greats are all written by men. So that's okay. It's just that they assumed all are the same. And that's, you know, and that the brain functions and motivates and has the kinds of hormones in it that cause that to be a thing, a way that we could do it ourselves. So we're all striving. So we, you know, the whole planet is running pretty much this model, right? If you want to be successful at anything. So that's, this is the typical institutional model, right? It's, you know this, it's goal setting and all of the stuff that's never, ever questioned it's the way to achieve, okay? Um, my realisation that was that, hang on a second, um, I wasn't doing any of it and yet I was blitzing and doing better than everyone around me. How was that even possible? So... You know, it's understanding that this is perfect for the masculine brain. So your brain is wired to your uterus, ladies. It just is. It's wired to your uterus. And hormones are the fuel, right? So to assume that all of that's going to work with you is to not understand just our biology. And you would be extremely forgiven for that because guess what? No one, no experts know it either, right? So what's coming out of all of this? Well, what does work, okay, and what I did realise. So it's not easy to grasp. Um, so what did I actually learn, though? So at this point, we're talking 20 years in. We're talking being able to see the data of startups up to 10,000 on a spreadsheet, Month in and month out, we could predict, sadly, okay? And what I was seeing, because I've, I've conducted over 830 live women's events, 
right, over that time. The psychology of women does not change with the internet, with digital, with AI. The psychology of women, it can be manipulated, but at the end of the day we are what we are, not we are who we are. That changes. You can change all that, okay? So interestingly, I was always called a fluke, almost like put down, and yet I was having to train the people who couldn't do it, who were trying to, who were running the male models. Like, why? How is that even possible? They said, "Don't tell anyone. You're just a fluke." So I, that is a gaslighting done innocently. You're a fluke. You're less than. You're not good enough. Okay, but you must teach what is right and is expert. And they know more than you. Who do you think you are? So this was the typical thing that I bought into. It's really easy isn't it, ladies, to just buy into it? Well, if they think that, it might be true. And I'm an accountable person, so I'm going to believe you and ask, how can I be better? How can I be better? So that's how women can end up also probably being very successful but pulling back when they suddenly feel less than, that they're not doing it good enough. And yet they had it all along, but they couldn't understand what the formula was that they were doing. So this moment happened to me. I was on this trip overseas and I'm sailing the Rhine River sipping my with a bunch of girls. And I turned around to them because I was really, I was going, why do so many people fail? And they said, Maz, why do you care? Can you just enjoy your own stuff? that you earn I'm like well not really anymore because I actually don't 10 years in or whatever it was um, and I'm like yeah good okay experience money endless do what I want you know money's not a problem no more abusive men uh, all of that stuff yep okay great experience the other side but I had been on the other side for so long that my heart was for them it was not for these people who, you know, just only wanted that. So that's what led to, and I'm going to share with you now, right, the research mode that happened from that. It all sounds like it's someone else's story, right? But it's not. It's every woman's story or it leads to a deep, deep, oh, my God, Okay. It might be what you want. You might want me to give you the seven steps quick here. Just give me, give me, give me. I'll run away and it's going to make me successful or, you know, be better. But that's not what you need, even though it's what you want. The research was ridiculous. I did walk away. I walked away from 27000 a month and helping all these women. But the pressure of having to teach what I wasn't doing was making me no longer feel congruent. And I had a problem to solve. Why was personal development so awesome but not sticking? Why didn't they change like I did? I, and I'm only sharing with you. At this point, I didn't know what it was. So that's why it's not in here yet. It makes no sense. When you look at research, I think it's 22%, 22% or something, of actual research dollars goes to women and yet 52, between 52 and 55% of all psychologists and psychiatrists are actually female. However, when they put their uh, uh, reports, their white papers up for citations, there's no one to citate them because they're choosing female issues. No one wants to do it and there's no one to do it. So they do not get the citations. It's something like 20% or something like that get through, which is sad because the minor, you know, the rest get through, there's peers and they're talking about as if everything's one. But the women are learning and realising and wanting to talk about that. There is a hierarchy here, look, in the scientific community, whether you like it or not. Yes, there are, all, there are equal numbers of women in there. There is not equal numbers in change because of it. That's the truth. I, I was so shocked. I'm like, surely, surely. I'm not trying to depress anyone because we do have a solution, right? Some of them 
are waking up, but how is that, you know, creating the change? The, question, the, the questions that came from the research was actually bringing me more questions instead like further away from what I thought might have been a simple thing to do. What did come out of it though was, oh my gosh, my family patterns was everyone, it wasn't just me. So those women are trying to prop up all the time in business, like prop up, prop up, uh, constant revert, three steps forward, two steps back. So where did everything we know originate? Everything. So, for example, when I ordered the DSM-5, the Psychology Bible, I'm like, all right, before I dare read this, I want to know who wrote it. So then I went and looked, okay, so 12 men uh, and one woman. So what, where did she get her training from? The men. Then I'm like, all right, so what is everything found, founded on? What do they know for sure 100% and what are their beliefs and that's when it dawned on me, oh, my God. They call them the grandfathers of psychology because they are men. So I don't know if you heard of Wilhelm Wundt, who actually is that grandfather of psychology. There he is. Well-meaning men, I'm sure. Mostly worked on women as they did when they started developing psychology um, and mental wards and, you know, mental institutions and so on. But... You know, crazy history, ladies, like really, really crazy that everything's spilt on top of that, okay? So these are the brains here. There they are. There's the males who every single thing we believe in this industry about how minds work came from them and then on top of that. So everybody wrote books who studied these theories. And it went from that to that to that to that to that. Now that's, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, that's just silly. Well, it's actually just fact. It just is what it is. Uh, I saw an interview on um, an annual psychiatric association conference in 2012. So the president at the time was John Oldham. And they were at a conference in, uh, in uh, Austria. And he was on TV and he was interviewed and the interviewer said, to him asked him so how do you know mental illness exists like how do you create these how come the book's growing of psychology you know psychology psychological illness he said oh well every time we get given a list of symptoms that are the same at least 500 times we assign it a name and then we send that to the labs and we say this is the cluster symptoms. How do we how do we stop the symptoms from existing? Not what causes it never asked. It's not asked. It's not a question. Um, and could there be anything other than going to a lab? No. Even on insight, you know, all of the psychologists and in the end she got they, she got the psychiatrist, uh, I think the American president was or something like that said, what needs to happen for this crisis? And she said, we just, we need to he heal somehow the emotional connection. I'm like, duh, doing it every day. And, you know, obviously don't fit within that system of respect because they know it all. So, you know, they only know what they know and they have a way of valuing um, intelligence and it's only one sort of intelligence that gets assigned value. So, uh, anyway, so that's interesting. Don't you find that interesting? <laughs> Just symptom clusters, right? And he was also asked at that conference, how do you know where's the evidence? He said, well, why is this the only area of any medicine that does no test? And he's like, well, so that means all mental illness is the perception of human to human or human self because the symptoms 
must be told and that's it so this is why you see you know narcissists manipulating their own psychiatrist so that she's still wrong <laughs> you know so yeah so when you combine no help's coming no one's realized there's a problem then you look at well epigenetics is what they have discovered but they're looking oh my god they are looking at 50% egg, 50% sperm gives you a whole blueprint and then the blueprint is the human 50-50. That could not be right and it only takes common sense to work this one out. It cannot be right because of the female factor, which we'll, I'll show you in a sec, okay? So if epigenetics is true and they certainly have evidence, they even have evidence now up to 14 generations in, I think, silkworms and whatever. You've got to have something that can turn over that quick to have the evidence. But it's where they do have the evidence, uh, so, you know, life cycles, generations that turn over very quickly, it's there. I mean, even on Current Affair, there was a little boy who had a particular cancer that the only exposure was four generations back. There had been none since. So can things, you know, play out even more uh, later? Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, absolutely. So did you know? That's right. You were weighed. Women were weighed because of a belief. You see, they needed something to blame for the weather, why people's children might die at birth. It must be a curse. If the weather and the crops, you know, superstition and then the patriarchy capitalised on that, as a really good reason to knock off a lot of women, 15% of witches were male, called witches. There's no evidence of a witch even exists, right? you got to understand. So anyway, and in, yes. So they set up these weighing stations what, that would weigh like cattle and weigh, you know, seeds and whatever in these little towns set up all over they went nuts in Europe and they set up these weighing stations and they weighed women I mean what terror would there be if you could possibly be weighed and consider under what they said men said was a weight of somebody living uh you know too bad if you're really, really poor and couldn't eat and you were shown to lose weight because they would go, up. Ah, she's living on herbs, she must be a witch. And uh, you could be just killed right there in front of your family. Or So what terror would that be about being a woman? Wouldn't it be just being afraid you're even a woman? Craziness. What about weight issues now and eating disorders? I mean, could it be that when women get to well, go away, they can't understand why they flick and sabotage themselves and feel a sense of, oh, my God, I've got a, uh, 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 this desperate thing to go and eat and get fatter and then be calm again but not happy in herself. So I don't know. I could be full of shit with that, absolutely. But just it's, you know, all of this does make sense, doesn't it? So who's feeling this? Who, who's motivated by it? Um, yes, so are we the change? Let me get my little notes here. Okay. What if then we stop waiting to be saved? What if we, what if we actually could do this ourselves? Okay, so maybe we're actually what we've been waiting for rather than thinking that we need to be saved in the first place because if it's not gettable, it's not gettable. If it's not fathomable, it's not fathomable. So then why don't we just need to understand that we can step in with the right tools, the right ownership, we can seize the power of just what we have and get at least equilibrium back on the inside so they don't have to try and fix us when they haven't yet noticed the problem and will probably argue about it because they don't fathom it. So that's the thing. 
Um, all right, so then, all right, just, you know, let's have a little quick talk about you, what you are taught. So you are taught personal development to believe in yourself, aren't you? So that's all well and good. Some of you, oops, some of you could have read, I don't know, a thousand self-help books. So, and be, and be so helped that you, are, you know, that it has helped majorly. But it, there's still this thing where although you know you're supposed to be, wor that you are worthy, that you are enough, you know, being consistent, just believe in yourself, silly, you know, You've been told by your husband every day for, you know, three years in a row, every single morning, you're beautiful. Does it mean you completely know that to be true now? That's what I'm talking about. So, uh, or is it that you know you should and you even say to yourself things like, I'll put myself on camera here if I can, there we go. Even things like um, defending that you're that empowered, that you know those things. But my question is, do you know, know, know it? That's the thing. Do you know you're worthy to the degree that it's not words you have to put in front, I believe? Because if you still are at, well, it's a belief, there's more because when you come into knowing it, everything leaves your head that is keeping it a belief, okay? So that's good. That's what we've got to work on because we need to make sure it does. It's like all of the self-help, personal development therapies, brilliant stuff. I mean, you know, really great, great stuff. I mean, I wrote books too on it. You know, all great if we didn't work the way we work. So it's like it's all sandwiches, but we've got glad wrap over our mouth. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know, but there's still this hunger that's not being fed. There's still this something missing. There's a ton of innovation out there, isn't there? But I want to ask you, you know, how much in certain areas? So if somebody's trying to be an innovator to look for a new, better way, if they learnt in schools where wheels were the main way you achieve something, then everything in their perception seeking answers will be from within the box of wheels. And that's the problem, is what I'm trying to say. So what's really changed? I mean, I won't even go on about the duck bill. It's never, you know, uh, that they use for women gynecology, where that come from or the fact that it hasn't been innovated. Um, but at least I must, it, it is good now that they're at least disposable, I suppose. Um, so, yes, it's where, where, why do we not ever ask or even notice this vein that we run with the vein and that's it once we that's the vein that's the innovation is allowed within that vein I literally was just my mum she was her mum she was her mum and so on so the female I want to talk about in a minute but did you know only a very short while ago I mean six generations like I said I've known seven so my granddaughter you know if that were me at that age looking back Five generations, six generations ago, and our generations are only 20 years, most family generations are 30, that a marriage licence was a bill of sale. And you can argue and think that's feminism to even say such so as it's just 
fact, okay? And it was so that the seed could be passed on, a man's seed could be passed on, and this was the way they could insure it. So they would, you know, sign that agreement with her and so on, and they built their name passed on. But uh, So understanding that is not very long ago. In the whole grand scheme of things, epigenetically, that's just yesterday, okay? You, uh, a bloodline is a bloodline that, you know, yes, one person gets to be alive in it and experiencing it at a time, all right? Or a few together, but right, just if you can see it that way, that each generation is a little blip, then you'll see we're not that different from these times if you were to question yourself and say, why do I feel such terror, you know, um, at times? Why am I so unsafe? Well, that if you really think about it, the only, yeah, th this is not very long ago at all. So if they went through these things, the trauma that happens because you're female, so I know everybody goes, but, you know, we're equal now and, and, and women are empowered now. But I want to ask you this because do men ever understand? They don't have to or do they? I don't know. I don't know. But the, the um, perception of what it must be like to be the weaker sex. Now, I'm talking about physically weaker. I'm talking about smaller. So it wouldn't even matter if you were empowered. You, you'd be very naive. To think, a, you know, a man over there, if he wanted to, couldn't call upon his muscles that tighten a bit differently to ours to cause more strength. Let's just get with the program. That the only way they could ever know is if bigger, stronger beasts roam the world. They will never get it otherwise. And they had to love them and give them what they want. And because, you know, it's true that, you know, you, you go on dating as a woman, meet a man online, you are thinking, will I live tonight? He's thinking, what's she like? So that's quite a thing. That's a big difference. We can deny it. We can whatever. But it is riskier being a woman. It's riskier to safety. Her nervous systems become so from history then where it has been abused, right? And... And that hypervigilance, we've come away from trusting our gut is going up, got our back. Our gut is already there. Our gut will take care of us. We don't need to use this frontal little brain. So evolutionary-wise, I don't know what you're into, but if you understand evolution, believe it or not believe it, whatever, they say that we have three brains, regions, that the oldest is, sits on the top of the spine, Right? And that's your instinct, your brain, wired all through your nervous system into all that you are, connected to every single thing. And that is instinct. Gut, instinct, the same as, you know, if you're walking along a path and you think you see a snake, you instantly, your body communicates, right, and sends all the blood out into the extremities of all the organs, sucked out in a millisecond. And as that's happening, it's releasing and, and releasing adrenaline, oxy, uh, sorry, not oxygen, adrenaline and cortisols and, you know, those um, corticotropic blends. And they are stress hormones. And what that causes, you know, that f r response could be any stress response, any of the stress responses could be triggered in that moment. But you do release the exact same proportion even if it turns out to be a stick. Your body, while you are perceiving it's a snake, it may as well be. And my question is, while we're perceiving what, you know, we've, throughout history, has happened... Uh, and seeing through such terror, such, you know, even to the degree like um, if you were deemed a witch, they would torture you until you dobbed in another one it's because they were said to never be alone. So over those 300 years 
of doing that, women also ended up buying into it and were throwing each other under the bus because they, for so far, oh, well, at least I don't have to die alone. And so then they turned women on each other as well. So then you have all of that stuff in there. It's all stuff, isn't it? Interesting. I find it very interesting anyway. So, yeah, the foundations that everything's built on, I don't know, if you go and have a look, you know, everything from family constellations to, you know, coaching, all coaching methods, all business, um, NLP, men, you know, businessmen, psychology men, medicine men, expert science. Yes, women are standing there, but are they? Are they even aware? So, yeah, that's all that meant. All that means, if you truly get it, is that we can do this ourselves. Maybe, maybe we don't need it to be that way. Okay. So, all right. Um, help's not coming anytime soon. Okay. In in the redesigns of methods, the redesigning of stuff to fit our neurobiology, body. So let me just see if these slides are coming. Oh, they're coming up now, <laughs> what I was about to say, so I will wait. There are no peers to review this. Can I say that? They can't fathom it, even the women. But what we're getting is phenomenal and we just need to get it out there because we can't rely on approval, right? As far as safety goes, this is a thousand times more safe than talk therapy as well. Just basic talk therapies, way more unsafe than this um, because that's a part of the design. So we're going to start discussing men's brains, women's brains, and how they're very different from each other. Now, I want to start with men's brains. All right. Now, men's brains are, are very unique. Men's brains are made up of little boxes. And we have a box for everything. We've got a box for the car. We've got a box for the money. We've got a box for the job. We've got a box for you. We've got a box for the kids. We've got a box for your mother somewhere in the basement. We got, we got, we, we got boxes everywhere. And, and the rule is, the boxes don't touch. When a man discusses a particular subject, we go to that particular box, we pull that box out, we open the box, we discuss only what is in that box. All right? And, and, and then we close the box and put it away being very, very careful not to touch any other boxes. <laughs> Oops. I just wanted to quickly check if everyone had the sound. Sorry, my Catholic upbringing got in there for a minute, but I just jump over this. <laughs> see if I can quickly grab myself. I, I'm not a Catholic, but I went to Catholic school when um, I was little. Did everybody I, I had a lose nun who sound? taught on hell like she was born and raised there. I mean, I'll never everybody forget. Everybody lost sound. Uh, <laughs> it did me good, yeah, actually. It was a good thing. Still no sound. All right. Well, we won't do that. But look, Mark Gungwa, he always teaches. Now, women's uh, brains are very, very different you know, he from men's brains. Thousands of women's people brains are at a made time, up of big men and women in his audiences, to, and, and they laugh at the brain connected. difference. Men have all little boxes and a box for the mother-in-law and a box for the kids and a box for the wife. Your job and your kids are connected. Everything's compartments, right? Everything's compartments. Close the box, open the next box. This is how men are. And he talks about the nothing box that they absolutely love. Sit on the couch with the remote control. Go fishing. 
and it's all driven by energy and he that says, we call and, and, emotion. And, you know, that's the natural way men de-stress. Nothing in their brain. And, and he it's, goes, it's one of the reasons that, why and women tend to remember everything. She can't not think. Everything. But she's thinking about all the time, all the time, all the time. Because and so, if you take yes, an event... All and you connect it to an emotion. It burns in your memory and, and you the can remember it forever. The, female, and then the, the same thing happens for men. It just doesn't happen very often. We've come because quite frankly, we don't too care. Too much on the front As females, we're meant to be here and cross this. But we're using this frontal newest one. Women only one million tend to care old, about everything. This one, one to three, two, two. And she just loves it. How we're being in this world. We're not meant to be like that. We're meant to be very uncomfortable. Okay. And then we will be led, and then we will be free of the stress because the, the now men we have a box in our brain that most women are not aware of. It's just that the antenna this particular box is rusty. Has nothing in it. Of our uh, intuitive. And we read things wrong. Oh, it's a you know it, it's me or whatever. It's not them. Oh, they're good person. Uh, is everyone caught up In now? fact, we call it the I thought box. it was just a comedy show. It is a comedy show. And of you all know the boxes you know a man what, Rachel? has in his brain, they the were allowed to laugh our favorite box. at the sex difference if it's a comedy show. We're not allowed, though, if a man has a chance, to take it seriously, he'll go to his nothing box that every time. It relates to mental health, it relates That's to why a man can do something seemingly completely human. brain dead for hours it, on end. It, none of those questions you know, like come fishing. out of it. That's, that's the irony of that. That he can have thousands of people in the woods. They all know we're different. Everyone knows we're different. Everyone knows. The secret is knowing how we're different. And what I've discovered is it's it's not complicated and we're not crazy and, and, and we There's love it that's, reason that's why a guy why. can sit in front of a TV and go see it's just not being considered so uh, let's see what else it glows uh, of course this drives oh, our wives God. nuts because Black. they'll come up and okay, say stop I it <laughs> I it was just you can't possibly All right, be watching me. anything <laughs> I'm not Go away. <laughs> now they've actually measured this. The University of Pennsylvania a couple of years ago did a study and discovered that men have the ability to think about absolutely nothing and still breathe. <laughs> you know, they connected all the wires and stuff like that and watched the brain activity then all of a sudden, he answered me. I think he's dead! Huh? You know, women can't do it. They can't do it. Their minds never stop. And, and they don't understand the nothing box. And it drives them crazy. Nothing drives a woman more crazy or makes her feel more irritated than to witness a man doing nothing. Look at this.
we know the sperm and the egg come together form one blueprint and then that one cell now one cell becomes up to a hundred trillion that knows be a liver be kidney be a vascular whatever right brain heart whatever okay and, and this is how you're going to work okay you don't need to do what i'm doing you do what you're doing, supposed to do and blah, 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 whatever and it knows also put the knobby knees in come on we're from this this bloodline's got knobby knees in it make sure they've got freckles well make sure also it's got the same predisposition story make sure it's the same things that are sort of going to happen to keep the self being the self because the self is genetically and epigenetic so epigenetics mean an instruction told to the gene on how to express itself be healthy be unhealthy cause this don't you know cause something else so it's um it's an interesting science but what i'm saying here is women have a much bigger power this is our power right here so you were an egg inside your mother while she was inside her mother for four to five months being fed by your grandmother's umbilical with direct stresses affecting there so this is how you're very tied into the bloodline undeniably because your unconscious mind is the one that creates bloodlines so it must understand them and so it's that means whatever your grandmother experienced you basically got the stress of in the umbilic through the umbilical into the cell development into your flesh like well into what will become flesh so that's you could say well it doesn't matter there's no proof it may not matter but what does is is the fact that we've made something built it on the premise of this stuff and blow me down if it doesn't work exactly like you would have thought it would be because of these things breaking those patterns so that's what i'm getting to obviously but i'm just try and see the bigger picture that it's not silly it makes more sense right so then a lot of the stuff we're told don't know but yeah so on the left here that's what we've got right so that means you've got your mother's stress when she was pregnant you've got your grandmother's stresses more so because of this so tell me this if you do any personal development any therapy work and it doesn't respect what does know this like the engine room of our uterus the we're not just conscious you don't sit there and go well i have to goal set this baby and work my plan plan my work work my plan compartmentalize i can't do it all today no uh, no outside of your awareness without breaking a finger up nothing a baby is created so is there a part that's wiser than you that that knows it, all of this that men would never know because they never had to need it did they why would they need this program why would they need this level of unconsciousness why if it's not ever needed that makes sense as to why oprah winfrey about 10 years ago on her show got a head scientist and they went head to head and she goes why don't you test on females and he said because you can't like the cycle he was adamant and that it they never got an answer every time she said but you need to he said but you can't was it there was no solution but you can't you could not get through to that man in that that there could be another way than the only way they knew which was measuring in the devices that they had to measure in so okay could you have what about that unconscious realm of information you know super conscious is conscious uh, unconscious conscious is being aware in the moment of reality that's conscious being aware of what you are is happening with you in this moment and you can only activate full consciousness for no longer than five minutes of any 24 hours 
So what is running you? What's making that baby be of this bloodline? What's turning one cell into up to 100 trillion with different jobs to do? What's making putting in there the predisposition? So we do know it can change. That's what's great. Epigenetics is like, woo, it means we're not our DNA. It means we can change. But how in a lasting manner is the real question. So let's keep going because guess what? Um, your DNA isn't your destiny. It's really the message. So they do know. Like, look at this. this that Time magazine is quite old. I remember getting that when it was in the shops. And so, you know, these magazines, they know it's not me. I'm not saying this. And you will see in the – what I see happening in the personal development world is they don't get it. They say, oh, we're changing beliefs, so we're changing epigenetics. If I change your belief today, just your belief, then you've epigenetically broken the pattern. That's not actually, that's nowhere near enough. There's what about the perceptions of self within that moment? What about the perceptions of others in that moment? What about the perception of the whole world? What about the perception of all of my future? That's a package of perceptions. What about my beliefs? What about my thoughts? There's a package if you're just only going for just the belief and a reframe on the belief that is what? Well, which reframe are you going to have? Are you going to have how you're seeing yourself in that moment? Uh, is that therapy about framing how you see other people in that moment? Is that therapy pure? Is the facilitator not giving an ounce of their opinion or from their belief system? So, yeah, there's more to it and I'm just saying what runs us 23 a point whatever hours a day is unconscious. Could it that runs the program be where we just tap in there but consciously because if you don't know it happened. So number one, you have to consciously make a decision to change and give it permission and it's not hip, this is not hypnotherapy, this is unhypnotherapy because we're hypnotised to totally be the, you know, buy into our own belief system. So um, we've got to unweb ourselves from the ancestral, heal the stuff so that we no longer are predisposed to have to go through that thing to carry forth and be of that bloodline. So, yeah. And this is why we do it. We do it for these little folks. We do it because who is going to? If no one's caring enough to go there, who is going to help them? We could just let it keep going. Sure. Which is we're doing the best we can to help them, aren't we? Especially as mums, aunties, nanas and whatever. Like we, you know, we're doing the best we can. And we un doesn't mean we're failing, doesn't mean we're bad, not, none of that stuff. But the best news is they're not destined just because we were and didn't know how to break that cycle more than by just pushing against it. What you resist persists. Anyone notice that? The more Because you're adding, I was adding anger, I was angry. I was angry at what had been done to me. I'm like, who do you think you are? Like, you don't do that. That's not okay. You don't do that. You're not going to do it to me. I'm going to etch to protect. And so the fear, the protection, the anger, the, you know, payback stuff, all of the stuff we go through is just all, you know, doing the best we can. So there's no blame, nothing. This isn't about any of that stuff. It's about the future just because it was doesn't mean it should be. Just because we've been doing it that way doesn't mean we just keep doing it that way. We're independent decision-making, autonomous beings. It's one of the privileges of being a human. It's making choice. And for some humans, being feeling responsible if you could make that change while you're alive. So our very nature, our original natural design, okay, 
if we could see the root system as being all of ancestors and our bloodline, right, what's how we know we're of the blood of this bloodline, what has history done then in in that keeping us good girls, if you will? This is how you be a girl, or this will happen to you, or you're bad. Or you're wrong. So being wrong, made wrong, being so history. Um, history has a lot to answer for, and I don't want it repeating. Even I'm happy for the good bits, obviously, but that the this stuff has to stop. Now we do this to ourselves as well. So the byproduct, even as we're changing, as we're becoming empowered, could we be shoving our root system into what should be to be a good girl, expected, fear that I better look good on the outside, look at my beautiful branches, I'm just perfect. So therefore, you'll like me, you won't reject me, you'll leave me alone. You won't hurt me because I'm being a good girl. Is this making sense? So suppression, oppression, repression. So oppression from history is other people pushing us down. We're gaslit by society, each other, and ourselves to ourselves. But history gaslit us already. You already inherited less than and not good enough but we do it to each other still and we do it to ourselves, and it's got to stop it has to stop and then when how can it stop by healing it suddenly you see it for what it is and then you can deal with it because the fear and all of the fear of being abandoned left alone because when you when you're stuck it's hard to hear this because you'll go yeah right but still it could they could leave me if I spoke up. But actually when you get the wisdoms that come through with something like, Creatrix is just an education method. It's, it's just a university where every woman can go or if you want a school where every woman can go and just allow self to undo itself. It's now picked up the missed lessons from history. Okay, But this here, when we're really this, is the problem. See, we need to change in here. If we change in here, everything changes. Did you know the irony? And this is why people who see Creatrix online, they're going, oh, there's got to be something going on here because it can't work like that. And then when people experience it for themselves, they're like, hang on, I wasn't even in that story. How is it effect? How come I'm now different? How come I feel different? How come my problem's not there? But we didn't even go near my problem. Oh, my God. And that's that. I don't know if you see any of our stuff. Oh, big thunder. I don't know if you see any of that stuff online, but our, our stuff. But there's these silent moments when a woman first opens her eyes because she's not opening her eyes because she's hypnotised. We're not telling us anything. She's focused to get the job done. There's a job she has to do in there. And so she just gets it over with. That's why her eyes are shut. Um, and she, as this like pennies drop in there, then it's like before when I said personal development, like eating sandwiches, but we've got glad wrap on our mouth and it doesn't get through. It's like this wisdom is personal development from the inside out. That's personal development healing. Like you, you learn what, you, what may be, maybe we don't know, um, the ancestors who originally were in the very first ever situation that led to ha you now having the problem too and it being in the family now gets addressed. So, okay. Um, and that's, it was really in a lot of this research that I realised, oh, my God, I actually myself had, had a wake-up call that I didn't know. I was on an ABC radio um, interview on one of my books my personal storybook, and she said, 
But what was the moment? And I'm like, oh, my God, I wrote a whole book and I left the moment out. The moment, there was one, a wake-up call where time stands still and in that moment there's no sound, your beliefs aren't back in your body yet. It's like a freeze moment, right? And you just see life with clarity and suddenly you're now motivated and you just change your life. A lot of people don't know they have one either, so they say it's because of what they did after that exact choice point moment, wake-up moment. Uh, click through here. So, yeah, the hypotheses that really led to coming up with something that could be as radical as this is that the frontal lobe brain really, it's, it's overrated, that our issues run deeper, that because we've got a uterus, we need to consider the bloodline and you might say things like, but, you know, what about souls and all different past lives and all that? All of that is not whether it's all real or not, we don't know. But what we do know is perception as a human is keeping a suffering as, as a definitely happening. And perception by someone else who may have had the same experience may not have seen it like you do so that means that it perception can uh, fix whether it's spiritual soul anything body mind anything I'd really love some interaction do you know how hard it is to do one of these things and you're talking at a screen <laughs> so in the comments I'd love if you could just share anything any thoughts as I'm going along um, and we're more powerful than we think we're so freaking powerful that we could even do this, right? Heal ourselves. Doesn't matter. So everything at the end of the day doesn't matter, but you can't just walk in and tell people that because the method's created on this and it works 100% of the time and it doesn't come back. And it's painless. And it's safe. Safer than anything. And it's built with all of that. So it doesn't matter at the end of the day, but it's quite revealing that it does work. That's what's really, really, really interesting. Okay. So creatrix is like that wake-up call moment, a re-perceiving, resolving, healing, complete all that we are, whatever we are. I'm sure we'll find out more that we are that we don't know yet. Who do we think we are, mere humans? And so that that led to creating a bloodline healing method but isn't a bloodline healing method because that would be the wrong perception to have because that's not understanding that we just needed to access the wisdom and it's done within wherever it is coming from and it's got to be done within this framework that would never harm itself, would never give itself, not the deep unconscious, will never. Its job is to protect you. It's not going to allow that. It's not going to allow anything negative. And it's important that the facilitators of this adhere to staying out of it adhere to making sure they do it how it's made so that we continue to get ridiculous results that no one could do. No one can do what we can do that we've seen. We're well, certainly welcome to try and find out. That's right. They don't focus on the female side, Rebecca. And to be honest, they don't even, they are still adamant, even epigeneticists, all research has done medicinally in labs can i just say as well they're not no one's looking for an organic way solution but um they don't consider that the incubator why is it an incubator why would you call it just an incubator even still like hang on a second talk about undervalue the uterus and the power of a woman's body not not saying each of us are almighty powerful and we should be we're better than anything or anyone 
I'm saying our design is extremely amazing, powerful, and deserves just at least respect for that because without that there is no planet, life, people, I mean, on it. So we devaluing ourselves is, is a crime against ourselves, <laughs> you know. So let me tell you the wake-up call elements that were needed to be in this are timelessness, observer-only mode with uh, a belieflessness as well. Can't have beliefs. So the facilitator needs a butt out if she's got them and she needs to address them, and we do in my program. All faculties are suspended, no filters at all. So faculties is all of what makes us beliefs, thoughts, values. Now, the biggest beliefs that are the biggest problem for women are not what they think they are. They are not just less than. There are many others, and they are hidden as virtuous, and they are assumptive. Um, no one outside of self can teach in this method. You must butt out. So anyone just want to go and teach everything they know, our women are more concerned for the result of the other person. And it's easy to do that. And you can still teach a lot of what you know because once they're cleaned out, they need to know things. But want, they need that first. Creatrix comes first. And I'll show you why in a minute. And a decision is made unlike any other. A decision comes just before it as well to change. And so we only, this is why facilitators are taught about that because it happens just before. If you don't decide that you're willing to do whatever it takes, like even if you're changing, you might have got yourself in a situation where you tolerate people's shit. So those people might need addressing, some might walk away, you might have all new friends before long, things like that that are more positive, more supportive. Some people can't be bothered because it's called secondary gain. Ah, well, I better stay like this because, you know, I'm on the NDIS and or he babysits or someone babysits the mother-in-law, better stay with him then, things like that. So we make sure that they will do whatever their gut tells them to do because we're ripening that gut instinct. They're going to feel that even more and that's what women want isn't it because then you can let go of thoughts you don't have to worry about keeping yourself safe you can trust and you learn again to truly tap in and listen to your own gut instinct because it, it's already got you back it's the not listening to it uh values realign thinking shifts and wisdom is realized so even if sometimes it appears to be something you might have read in a book one day you knew that book stuff was good you knew what they said was good but did it go in, be interpreted, convert to knowingness or not? And why not? Because your conscious mind read it and your unconscious mind resisted, allowing it to change you because you had all beliefs around it, assumptions and stuff that actually makes you dig your heels in and hang on to it. No, so that's its job is to keep you the same of whatever you tell it you want through belief systems and the reticulator activating part of the brain, which is just, it's called the RAS, it's assessing everything all the time. And out of 2 million bits of information you are literally exposed to every second, it's what decides by you programming it and maybe epigenetic or sort of programming you can only notice, even at the best, 137 bits of that 2 million. So how then, what about the rest? There's a ton of possibility, but you'll never see it because you've so conditioned that you can only spot the 137 of them and that's it selects them based on your belief system, what you allow as well as what you believe. And it breaks a cycle no matter where the cycle started. So you might say, well, I don't know where it started. Um, I don't really see it much in my family. Well, it could skip generations. Who cares if it even started with you? The process works, so it doesn't matter. So the byproduct is you don't have your problems. You, your perceptions change as a byproduct. You're not even in the story, but as a byproduct, you get the transformation. This is what is really happening. 
So the sustainable model for women, it's organic, it's natural, it fits us, it's just a wake-up call, it's, um, you don't, it doesn't require experts who know brains because the only brains they know is universal anyway and who cares where it comes from, who cares why they've got it. This is everybody cares about that and they also, it's a process focus way. Instead of going around, what's the result? What do we need to happen? That's what's got to happen. How does that happen? How do we get lasting outcomes? No one's even asked the question. So solution is not part of the why they do it. Symptom relieving is where cause changing, and even if we got that wrong, we still found how to not have the problem exist, so it doesn't matter. So what you don't want to do is go, how does this really work, though? You're not making, well, you know what? It's not for everyone to know because it makes no difference. And it's not understood. Your brain can't understand it. It doesn't fit. But it works, so why care about the wrong thing, knowing how something works? That's the whole problem we've got on this planet. Why? How? What if it just works? It's just not there when you open your eyes. It's not there. So a lot happens. But it certainly feels like an equal balance of science and spirituality. It's like creatrix is in the centre, whereas almost everything is either that way or that way. It's either logical, conscious, sciencey, or it's airy fairy, you know, unconscious but without the conscious. Like creatrix involves. Yes, well, we're tapping into it, but it's, cre it's consciously um, recognised. So it's very nicely balanced. It just works. It's incredibly effective. The safety that's built into it just blows me away. Um, I f Maz, in one of her um, presentations, was talking about the word transformology and said, you know, it's a silly made-up word because I had a sort of knee-jerk reaction to that as well had a lot of reactions um but she said you know psychology was a made-up word and you know one day transformology will be you know the new word and it's absolutely freaking right because psychology is just about someone being an expert and having an academic kind of process and sitting there and being the the expert over someone else's life that's not the ideal way to do psychology but it's the ideal it's what happens in a lot of therapy sessions transformology is about transformation and um and it's it's giving the ownership of that to the client which is best practice it's at, it's gold standard best practice and it's absolutely safe so how can then how can that not be the future i feel myself getting emotional about that because that's how that's how it should be managed. Understanding trauma doesn't make you better at not triggering trauma. Why this does not matter whether someone's been through hell or a small thing is because it works with 100% disassociation anyway, so it doesn't even matter. This is kind of the evidence we're getting, okay? So a woman comes in extremely low self-esteem. We do creatrix and that's her after. So... Statistically, the, the, we did this on 86 women, worked on the same things to test, and then you have this one here, unsafe. I mean, how many women come and, and just feel unsafe? They can't explain it. Like they really aren't unsafe, but they feel unsafe all the time, hypervigilant. You know, that stuff is easy for us. Yes, look, I'll give you a copy, Rachel, of this. I'll send you a link tomorrow and you can watch it, okay? I, every time I listen to Maz speak and explain it, it's like this is just so, so clever um, because I, don't know, I think coming from that NLP background and the more that, the more that I learn about it, the more I go, wow, this is just so, so awesome. The the safety measures that are built into it, it yeah. are just 
Fantastic. I think for women, that safety and knowing that we're safe is like way up here. So a couple of years ago, uh, I experienced a situation that caused me to experience acute stress and left me feeling completely disconnected within myself and also that I no longer felt I could be a part of the world. Completing the stress response reset has given me that reconnection within myself. And for someone that has spent decades doing the inner work and doing the inner journeying, to have this reconnection within myself has been the ultimate gift. My sense of purpose and my inner drive is now back to full power and my intuition, now that has just become so crystal clear and my responsiveness to it is also on point. I'll be forever grateful to Maz for gifting this to the world. And if Creatrix has crossed your path and you are wondering whether you should or you should not, trust yourself and you'll be forever grateful that you did. And is it a placebo? We often get accused of that. No, it's a placebo. Well, actually, the client does not have to believe it will work in any way, shape or form. She can come in 100%, this won't even work. But if she just does what we say even she's shocked absolutely blown away so it's not a placebo interesting isn't it we as the facilitator better believe it but we don't expect you to without going through it you you know be the change facilitate the change and then create the change because what happens is they come into awareness realize things don't ever see it. I mean, you can't sort of go back and see something away. You know what I mean? When you learn, like if you learn to tie a shoelace when you never knew how, then the old frustration of not knowing how to tie the shoelace. Where do you go to find that old frustration? It's not there. You've evolved. You know better. I have to say that the feeling that I get when I'm when I'm creatrix, creatrixing someone else. I'm so involved and so excited in listening and watching her face light up. It just is the most beautiful thing I've ever been able to do in my life. My business has got up sky high and it feels so good to feel confident and uh, just knowing, feeling in my whole body that I'm worth it and that I can, um, that I can achieve anything I want to. I have been trapped for two years, sitting home doing nothing but research. And now I found all my solutions at the end. What a great gift. I don't think, I'm sorry, I don't think that there could actually be any words that I could, um, that I could say to see those people. I know how much I hurt. Yeah. And to see those people in the same way as I was, and the fact that I did it and then to see them move forward and feel so empowered, I just, I just it's just unbelievable feeling. For, for nine months, uh, I had client after client after client and they all had, they're all referrals. They're all referrals. So every client came to me and, and she referred a new, a new one. So... And that's still going on now. There's so many beautiful people out there that have hearts. And once they realise that they can help other women the way that we are every day, holy dooly, when this goes off, it's going to go off. Everything that I need to run this business is available in the portal. You know, I ran a webinar with all of the stuff that was in the portal. It's so well laid out. It's phenomenal. Knowing that you have literally changed someone's life and you send them out into the world and you go, just be. Mm. And it's just, it's wonderful. And I want to tell every woman about that, that that change can be possible for them as well. Where everything comes from matters. Where everything comes from matters. If you want to write anything down, write that. Where everything comes from matters when you go about your life. So if you look here, I know, a bit primitive, and I am going to get these done professionally and make them in a good order and make sure everything bloody works and whatever. But, right, so that's you in the middle, okay? Your central core 
your empowerment, your no issues, insecurities, core central is matters. And I think you see so many people chasing lifestyle, 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 lifestyle. That is very you, not others. Fine. You can do that. But if you want to get beyond yourself, you help more people because they're not you, they're others. So lifestyle chasing is very much about you. It's very me, me, me. There's nothing wrong with it unless you want to help more people and you want to leave a legacy and you want to break patterns in for other people. Um, so, yeah, this is basically what has to happen first. So, you know, the rest comes from that. So the if you if you change and you care and you just care to reduce suffering through the tools you have rather than empower because people need to heal before they can empower we are the solution that's what i believe see the difference between female and male brain they look the same but the flesh, the actual material is slightly different because they've noticed that when you put uh, the cortisols onto the female brain, it's like acid eating it away. So the female has to release oxytocin is the price she pays. That's sad. It's reality. Because we have to, to water down the stress hormones so that, that we don't self-destruct. And it get, gets all used up the wrong way. It was meant to be for massive spurts at, at birth. And you don't see that sometimes, do you? Why not? Oxytocin generators tired, exhausted, used its resources. So to turn love back on, on this whole planet, would require healing the pain. And that can't be a bad thing. I do not know how it would ripple out and affect the men and the whole lot, but it would. It has to. It's an alternative. Look at this. So if we can have you be as a healed heart, be in the moment, not be in your frontal lobe, just enjoying life, not overstressing, well-balanced, nervous systems recalibrated, emotion regulations back at at its set point, yeah, hormones will fire it off as the month. It's meant to, okay? Even menopause, all meant to happen. That's for another day. But when you, when a woman is being in her most natural design, she is kind of led to what to do. And then if she does what aligns with her way, even maybe in her cycle, if she's still got a cycle going on as well, Doing the activities required for the external, the internal, the, the all of the different things she's going through, then she gets to have a legacy because we don't actually want for that much, do we? We don't want for things. So if we're being in a state of love, we're a love fucking generator and we're a love magnet. So getting in that love space is what I want to help women do. But it comes by healing their hearts, ladies, because guess what? All happens in us. So I've got to move quickly now. Uh, everyone liking the sound of this so far? I mean, it's pretty big stuff, right? You can't just jump to it. it it's, an, it's, an, it's too big inf information. It sounds like you're just corny. And it sounds like you're just trying to sell the impossible. Uh, if you feel you're born to change lives, like you can't explain it, but you've got that sense right? It doesn't matter where you come from. No judgment here. We don't do that here. Where you come from doesn't matter. Your morality matters because you could do, you could do this out of integrity. So I guard it with my life because we want women, I want you to be successful I want the people you help to be successful and I want creatrix to last beyond us. So 
if you want 100% results, 100% of the time, with 100% of the women, you run through my screening method and then do it, you'll be able to even offer a guarantee. You'll be able to, you know, depression, anxiety and PTSD, they're nothing for us. If you want safety and outcomes, they have to be a high, pro a high priorities to you. Otherwise, you won't, you know, do your best. Uh, and you've got to be accountable for what you are doing. Uh, you, we don't have expectations. Like, you don't have to work this. You can just do it for your personal development and whatever, but also then be able to facilitate it. Because I, for me to be involved, give you all of that time and everything like that while trying to grow this, I do ask that people just simply have some intention to help other people. That way I make sure that I've got the right people around me. So humble heart, humility, integrity, open mind, all really important to me. And you want to empower yourself and others in a deep and lasting way, not just band-aiding, right? Because there's you can band-aid, you can go and get do cheap courses, you can learn real you can get them from my books, but they don't stick. They are temporary, and that was why I created this. Um, if you want to be a walking role model, you want to be the change first. So includes tr your transformation, healing and empowering others, and creating a legacy. Uh, so our values are make the world a better place. Win, 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 win. Morality over integrity, more harmonious relationships, quality over quantity, safety comes first, keeping it simple, as, as simple as it can be, Females are the solution. So you do see that your work is, right, we're going the right direction, uh, and that you are willing to face any sabotaging stuff you've got that we can help you because we're just creatives here. We don't, we don't take anything personally and we don't expect perfection because we're going to be there to make you look good and get be able to make those claims. So you jump straight to specialists. You don't enter here as a coach. We don't coach, we transform. So we're looking for women with hearts who deeply care about the same stuff we do. We, we want to contribute to a better world. We have one standard no matter where you are in the world. So five months of first certificate. This is Erna. I watch her on social media. Look at that. Always photos of her feet. So Because she runs a business from her. She's living her absolute dream. That's her camper van and she wakes up and she just tells us who she's helped to feel worthy today. She doesn't say the names but she says what I've done and, um, yeah, she travels around Europe. That's her little office there in a camper van. You know, it's possible to create your own reality. She has a partner and everything. Don't just straight away say, think that she doesn't. She actually does. She chooses to go alone and go out for a few months at a time and that. I even tried it. I tried it myself. I'm like, ooh, what I've been able to do is it, oh, it's totally up to me what I do. So is personal development and entitlement all right? No, it's not. No one owes you anything. No one owes women anything because women don't even, a very small percentage will ever show up to their third, fourth or fifth free session. So this here is the two problems women have and that is martyrdom and people pleasing in this industry. So they come and go, I'm not charging anyone money. I'm, I'm really am Mother Teresa. Uh, but also then with accumulated resentment for the people who might take advantage of that. So is a balance. Virtuous beliefs you need to know that are sabotaging um, and that's what I love to teach women. We overdo the maternal. The kids are grown. They're alive. They're kicking. They're good. So we don't need to keep doing that. So in a five-year period, you know, the amount we'll spend on our own personal development, add it up just to feel confident, but it doesn't last, is thousands of dollars. Um, this here, basically, the real problem is, though, is we need to gain wisdom because basically humans, with all of the stuff women go through as little girls and all of the stuff, is we actually come out of our cocoon to quickly... And in that moment, we're meant to come from unconscious learning. We come into conscious freeze and we assess incorrectly. So we get our right, wrong, good, bad, appropriate consequence, cause and effect all out of whack. 
So everything means we're a bad person, all this stuff. So recalibrating this is really what we're doing. Um, money, women are so scared of it or they hate it or there's all issues they have but they don't realise, they're just beliefs. Money's not anything. It's not anything. You will see the character of the person when they get a lot. That's true. But money itself, there's a lot of very wealthy people that are very beautiful souls. A lot of people don't know this because we're taught to point up at the hill. Well, guess what? You know, they don't think the same. Uh, and if they're good or bad, is no different to anywhere else. It, it's true, but it's very hard because we've got all of these things that money is evil, the root of it. You know, we owe, if it's emotions, then it's different. But if I start a shoe shop, I'm allowed to make millions because I won't be judged on my on my intent but I will if it's to do with emotional suffering so women play on that I have made more money in the last 12 months than I have in the last 10 years almost back to back it's just it, it's incredible and all of it has come from this one modality that has allowed me to make a massive impact on women's lives exponentially as well so the income and the business is just kind of this follow-on thing that happens because of the the one goal to make a difference to a woman's life you could be making fifty thousand dollars a year you could be making $100,000 a year. That's up to you, whatever you do. I'll certainly give you all the ways to do it if you listen, but you might want to do it your way. Who does that? Most five-star referrals from training or course-running institutes, whatever. So this is as complex as this is. There are four ologies as a methodology. Yes, that's all you've heard about, but there's a systemology to learn. There's the ecology of not understanding ripple effect and win-win wins and what can happen, and you need to understand that. Um, and there's the psychology as well of women and the psychology of lasting change in women. There's so These are all the things we, we spend on that are all included in my program. It goes on. It's all business. It's got tw it's 29 years of business success from me and you get all my tools. That's what I give to entomologists or creatrix facilitators for, for helping the cause because that's not what they're like. They're licensing creatrix, but they get everything. They get me all the time too. So this spreads by, this spreads easily by sharing because women just as what women do naturally. So it's not that hard to grow a business, like you might think, to get it out. Also, if you get us any speaking gigs or anywhere where women of influence, you know, that need to know this and, and may help us roll this out um, or you bring us facilitators, I will pay you well for that because we need to get this out there. So anyone that helps us get this to, to get more facilitators. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. I hope you got lots of learning. I'd really love to know what you learnt. Feel free to share it with us. All right. Bye, everybody.